How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cole and Jay and we are out here in the canoe today. We're out here on the lake at the edge of this beautiful cypress tree, water tupelo swamp. You see these fish out here quite often. And today we are out here targeting some panfish, more specifically bluegill, red ear. Maybe we'll get lucky and maybe catch a crappie or something cool like that. But our goal today is to mainly catch some bluegill and red ear. Right Jay? Yes. And we've got a bucket here that I found floating in the lake just a few moments ago. We've got some water in there and we're hoping to throw some in there so we can uh, cook them up sometime later on. But it's a pretty cool looking spot. We've got some shade lines. The sun is peeking through these trees and it's just a really beautiful sight. Fall is in the air. There's already some leaves falling through and getting on top of the water. Soon this entire area will be covered with leaves and be hard to fish. But we're going to try to take advantage of the open water while we can hopefully put some good fish in the canoe today. So guys, if y'all are excited for today's episode, do us a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and let's see who catch the biggest bluegill today. Let's do it. Or red ear, or just whatever. Biggest panfish. Thanks. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Oh, get him, Jack. You got him? Oh, first cast. Are you kidding me? Eight seconds into this shindig. Heck yeah, that's a good sign. It's not a monster. No. But Oops. it is a good sign, indeed. Sweet, a nice little swamp bluegill. Not a bad <laughs> size. You could definitely eat that in a pinch, but... We're going to catch some bigger ones. I think we're going to catch some bigger ones, yeah. too, especially if they're biting like that. That is a good sign. So this is kind of the rig we got going on today. We are using some night crawlers here. And we are just running them on some light jig heads. Um, normally, when we're fishing for bluegill, we use just like a number six or number four hook with a little BB split shot, but I couldn't find any split shots. So we're using light 132nd ounce jig heads today, which work just as good. Oh, get him, JJ. Ah, I missed him. Got your cheese smoke. Did he get my worm? Yes. No, you get, no, you're good. No, he got some of it. Got some of it. There he is. There he is. Is that bigger than the last one? Yeah, a little bit bigger. Just a tad bit bigger. <laughs> I'd say it's quite a bit bigger, honestly. Yeah. Good fish. Still a little bit too small to keep, but we'll throw them back. We'll get a good one. We'll get a good one here. Biting good. Oh, there we go. Oh, you got a good one? Feels bigger. What is that? <gasps> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was sure fighting hard. He's bigger. He is bigger. They keep getting bigger by like three or four millimeters each time. <laughs> Nice little sunfish. Beautiful. So pretty. You're all setting up three nothing. Yeah, where's the big boys at though? Got him. Oh, it's a nice fish. Ooh. Big fish. What is that? Oh, he just stuck around some crap. I think it's a big one. <gasps> yes, it is. Oh, oh look at the head gosh. on that thing. Now that is that what is we're what after. You want. I mean, I'll be getting the same numbers as you, Jay, but I'm getting, I'm getting the correct species. That is a nice red ear. Wow. It took us wading through some smaller fish to finally get our first keeper, but that is a solid one. Beautiful red ear. I honestly think that's kind of more of a hybrid. It doesn't have that really bright red ear. Looks like a hybrid between a bluegill and a red ear, honestly. Uh, but either way, that is a really solid fish and definitely the size we're after. And you see, he's got that jig head just hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> I had the tiniest piece of worm on there too. He looks so pretty with the sun shining through his... Fins. That's one thing we love about coming out and catching these, these panfish is that they all come in different shapes and sizes and colors, especially when you get these hybrids like this. But we'll drop them here in this bucket and uh, I got to get some more worm on my hook and get back out there. Maybe the red ear is starting to bite. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Decent one? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Dang. Some more of the same. Yeah. We're going to have to put the whole night crawler on the hook to get some big ones. Well, I had them. Look at, look at the, all that night that, crawler. That's a chunk. There. You're going to catch catfish with that. Yeah. Another nice little bluegill, <laughs> though. I'm going to sneak up in here and get that big one that was looking at your bait. Right before you caught the little one. Oh, he bit it. Got him. Oh, gosh. What is that? That's big. Oh, it's a shiner. Are you I think it's a shiner. It's a shiner. What? I can't eat that. Can't eat that. Unless it's a survival situation. <laughs> I have eaten a shiner before and it wasn't very good. So if you're thinking about eating a shiner, I don't recommend it. <laughs> that's a big old gold shiner. Maybe that's part of the issue. These guys will steer your bait because they have tiny little mouths. Big fish, but you got a tiny little mouth. He makes some good bait, but we'll throw him back. He'll be a lucky, lucky guy today. Not planning on doing any fishing in the next few days that would require him as bait. So watch, I'll probably change my mind in a couple days, but I'm going catfishing. Wish I had a big old shiner to use. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, 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 mm. Double, double, double. Oh, uh oh. Big. Uh oh. oh good. Jane playing. Jane playing. That's a good one. It took us long enough to get our first daily double of the day. Mine is <laughs> definitely not a keeper. And Jay's is kind of borderline. I don't know. What do you think, guys? Would you keep that? Would you eat that fish? Scale them, cut the head off, I eat them all? I probably would. would. That's a good one. Go in the bucket. Go in the bucket. That's a good one. Jay, you're on the board with the first keeper. How does it make you feel? Oh, good. A little I have relieved. a fish to eat. That's good. <laughs> oh, yeah. You ain't getting my ready. That's my fish. <laughs> Oh, oh gosh, your barber's gone. That's a nice one oh, too, wow. isn't it? What is that? What oh. is that? Is that a shiner? Oh. You got you a big old shiner? What is it? Oh, oh it is a big old shiner. I was just joking. <laughs> no. Man, what a cool fish though. They fight good. It's that's like for some sure. like some little mini swamp tarpons. <laughs> you get that deep side, they can just roll around. But, there you go. Hard to lift. They got tiny little mouths. Yeah, but you do not look appetizing. Nope. <laughs> He said, I look appetizing to a seven pound large male. Oh yeah. Well, now we've caught two shiners. I think that they're definitely responsible for all the fish we've been missing. Say that. Could be little guys too. Hey, mm. little, not too bad. That's a pretty one. Not too bad. Very next cast. That's a full colored bluegill right there. So pretty. He's a little bit smaller than the one we just kept, so we'll Ooh. send him back. Cause the one we kept was honestly a little bit borderline, but definitely, definitely a work. Got him. Whoa. What are you doing, buddy? Video. Oh, How big is he? Oh, oh, he's a good oh, one. Oh, he's a good one. He's a good one, JJ. Oh, okay. Hey. Oh, he. Here's this little guy I just caught, tossing him back. Jay, I think, has much better plans for this one here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I said like, oh, yeah, like five times in a row, but. Hey, maybe that maybe, maybe they get on to you for repeating yourself. <laughs> you always give me a hard time for repeating myself. You can't help it sometimes. You can't help it. Voila. Nice. Now that <laughs> is a quality bluegill. Yes. Keeper every day of the week. Took a while, but we got him. Maybe this is the spot. Not the most beautiful bucket. I rate the inside of this bucket like a 2 out of 10. It's kind of gross. But it holds water. <laughs> and that's the most important thing. I was going to use a stringer. This makes life a lot easier. I got to get some new buckets. Ooh, oh, what's, whoa, that? Whoa, whoa. what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Whoa. What's that? Oh. What's that? He is fighting so hard. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, yeah. yeah yes. Baby. Now I know that felt nice. Yes. This is a really nice hybrid. Been trying to catch one all morning. Took a long time. But yeah. We're, we're, we're probably already like 30 fish deep at this point. Yeah. And we've only got, I think we have three keepers. This will be our fourth one. We've got two of these really nice bluegill red ear hybrids. Um, I think it's a hybrid. Seems like it. It looks doesn't, like doesn't it. Look, it doesn't look like a purebred red ear. No. It's a little bit too, too dark in my opinion, but. Anyways, he's got some thick slab sides. He smoked that night crawler and he's gonna go in the bucket to our newfound bucket. <laughs> oh, that was so much fun. I wanna catch more this size because that, that fight was awesome. Just keep throwing it out there and I'm sure we'll weed through some more small ones and get some more big ones along the way. <laughs> Good job. Mm-hmm. 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 Big one. Good one. Yes, good one. There we go, Jay. That's another nice bluegill. Yeah, we moved back over to the spot where we first started, and that's a good one. My first cast back over here. Yeah, that's a definitely a really nice size bluegill. Let's add him into the bucket and let's get back to throwing over th over at those uh, logs and get some more good ones. <laughs> here we go, guys. The highs and lows. <laughs> oh gosh, of fishing in a swamp. I told you I was gonna break that. <laughs> she got hung up in that tree and pulled the whole tree down with her. Oh my goodness. Still kind of a mess, but it happens. Sometimes and, you get excited and you forget, like you got a tree right over your head. Yeah, but hey, at least you got it and you got that stick out of the way. So next time we sit underneath it, we won't hit it. Now I just gotta untangle this mess. I kid you not, guys. Next cast, <laughs> Jay is in another predicament. Hey, oh, I got it. She got it. She's ripping. <laughs> She's ripping. No, my line was tangled around the tip of my rod and I was like, Trying to get it undone and then it went up in the tree. Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> that'll do it. Oh, 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 oh. Decent one. Holy. Oh. There we go. There's me another keeper finally. Nice bluegill. I had another nice one on the cast before and I think that they might be stacked up right there. So I'm going to try to turn the canoe around. 
We can reach those fish a little better. We've gotten ourselves back here into some really tight quarters, but it seems like there's some fish chilling. Yep. Get out of that stick. Mm. Not a bad one. Is that a red ear? It's a red ear. Mm -hmm. Pure bread. Pure bread, baby little red ear. Look at that. Beautiful little red ear. Where's his big daddy at? Might already be in our bucket, to be honest with you. We'll see you. Got him, big and big and Ooh. big and big red ear. Nice. Big red ear, there's his big daddy. That is a nice red ear, bluegill hybrid. I do believe, look at that. He's got this weird chunk missing out of his heel plate. It's pretty crazy. But we just caught that small one, the cast of four, asked where his big daddy was, and he said, I'm right here. <laughs> and now he's in there. Ooh. All right, guys, we just made a little move. This will be the last little area we're gonna fish today. Hopefully we'll find some. It's a little bit more open. We were getting bit by mosquitoes in the middle of all those trees, so we kind of got out here on the edge. But there is still some good shade. Oh, and Jay's already got a bite. She got him? Oh, yeah. Biggin. Got him. Decent, decent one? Feels good. First cast. That was a good move. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, baby. Yeah. Good one. That was awesome. That might be my biggest bluegill of the day. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. First cast pulling up in the spot. Hopefully there's more. Hopefully they're all about that size too. Yeah. You know, these fish, they'll sometimes get, you know, to where they school up in the same size class. And it seems like, oh, Ooh. the majority of the fish we were catching were all small. I mean, we caught a ton of little ones. We obviously can't show you every little fish that we caught. Otherwise the video would be like three hours long. Hopefully we find some more big ones over here. Oh my gosh. Was that a bass? That was a bass. That was crazy. Where's your poppers at? Holy smoke. He didn't just smack it once. He came after that thing. I'm going to do it again. Something did. Oh, what is that? Is that, huh? is that a big fish? Another big bluegill. Whoa. Good one, Jay. Oh, I got one too. Oh, okay. missed him. Okay. Missed him. Got him. Nope. Missed him again. <laughs> this is a good spot. Yeah. Big cool. old bluegill. Add him in the bucket. Got him. Biggin. Biggin. Tubster. Big old bluegill. Jay, you got one too. Oh, oh missed him again. Big old bluegill. Ooh, he's purple. I know the coloration of these guys are weird. They look like cold water bluegill. He is kind of cold. He's got some kind of weird stuff. Looks kind of diseased. Hmm. I'm gonna throw him back. He's got some weird stuff going on down there. I say down there, he's got like these parasites and just weird stuff right there. But it's a cool fish. He's like super purple. Oh, oh, that looks thick. That's a good one. That looks thick. Ooh. Oh, a... red ear. Oh, I love red ear. Red eared slider or red eared sunfish? <laughs> both. I like both. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Cool fish, dude. He's honestly not, he's a good size. We've kept some bluegill that big, but you know, red ear, they seem, they get bigger than bluegill. Yeah. So he's kind of small. He's not small. He's kind of medium for a red ear. So medium. maybe we'll let him go and let, let him get bigger for next year. Oh, he's so pretty. Got him. Got him. Feels pretty good, honestly. <laughs> kind of medium guy. We might have one in there already that size, but we'll throw some back. We're looking to get one more good keeper, whether it be a good bluegill or a good red ear or a good catfish <laughs> or whatever. Just one more good fish. And then we're gonna head on in. We've been out here for a while now and we've got a good mess of fish here in this bucket. Oh, big something, big something, big something. Yes, oh, nice. there we go. All right, well, that is an excellent way to end our panfish fishing mission. We caught some really nice fish out here. We caught a bunch. We caught probably 50 all together, a ton of tiny ones, guys. Like, we caught some that were like that big, like, no <laughs> lie. But we did mix in some good ones like this right here. This is another good hybrid bluegill red ear. And um, we'll add them to the bucket. I think we probably got 10 or so, maybe a dozen. Oh, gosh. <laughs> in there right now. And um, overall, I'd say we had an excellent time catching these fish. Yeah. We caught them in a, in a pretty pretty good hurry. We were only out here a couple hours, so definitely have no complaints there. But we're gonna get these fish. We're gonna head back to the house. We're gonna get them cleaned up, and uh, we're actually gonna cook them up for lunch today. So we will see you guys whenever we get there. So if you've never cleaned a fish before, this is one of the easiest ways to prepare and clean a fish without wasting any meat. You just get a spoon or a knife. I usually prefer a spoon to get the scales off a lot easier. And you're just gonna rake them off from the tail to the head, just like this. You see they come off really really easily I guess you could technically leave the scales on and uh, eat around them but I just feel like this 
this is a better option. All right, so our fish is completely scaled. And then we'll just cut the head off. I like to cut right here at the vent right here and kind of cut at an angle up to the top of the head. Kind of work it around the head so you get all the meat. And so then what you're ultimately left with is this piece of fish right here. You have a whole scaleless fish with the head removed, the bones are inside of there. And what we're going to be doing is just frying this guy up. Um, we feel like leaving the bones in actually enhances the flavor of the fish. I mean, they're obviously really good, just filleted, um, boneless, um, but this is just a fun way to eat fish. And if you're somebody that isn't really that good at cleaning fish, um, not that good at filleting, you have to worry about you know missing out on some good meat. So that is one of our fish down. We've got about 10 more to go. Um, we'll wrap that up really quickly and then we'll get to cooking. All right, we are just about ready to start getting our fish ready to throw into the skillet. But first, we gotta get them all battered up so they can come out nice and crispy once we're done frying them. You know, preparing fish whole and frying them this way is a little bit more of an ordeal than just simply um, just frying the fillets, but it's kind of like the trade-off. You know, it's easier to clean them this way, but a little bit more difficult to cook them. But you know, it is what it is and it's really gonna be all worth it in the end. So what I have here is two different bags of um, different flavored fish mixes. This one here is more of a Cajun. This one here is just actually just straight up yellow cornmeal. And I've actually already thrown my uh, my fish into this batter. So what we're gonna be doing, we're, we're gonna be double dipping, we're gonna be double battering these fish just so that they turn out really nice and crispy. There's been times whenever I've um, had fried whole fish or I've prepared it myself and it just didn't really come out crispy because I only battered it once. And um, you know, I've found that if you double batter it, you know, it's always going to come out nice and crispy, even though sometimes you can just do it once and it'd be crispy. But anyways, so here's our fish. It's kind of dripping some batter everywhere. It looks really nice. And so now that we have our fish battered for the first time, we need to go in for the second dip. But to do that, we first have to dunk it in this little mix right here. This is actually some eggs that I whisked up and I added a little bit of milk to it. And uh, we are going to be dunking this whole fish into there. I had to be careful not to spill it. And then we're going to be dunking it into the cornmeal and then that will go into the skillet with the oil. This is definitely the worst part of all this, but it's definitely worth it. There you go, just a little shallow dish, the egg whisk. And those of y'all have been watching for a while, you see that we do this all the time when we're cooking fish this way. And also when we're cooking like frog legs, maybe even deer meat, if we want that extra crisp. So we got him in there. Kind of shake them up a little bit. Got a plate right here. I'm actually going to take this guy out of the bag so there's plenty of room for the other ones. Let's see how it turned out. I like to grab him by the fin. Look at that right there. That looks very thickly battered. We'll sit here on this plate. And so now we just gotta repeat the steps again with the rest of these fish and we will be ready to fry them up. All right, we got everything all set up now. We've got the skillet with the oil all heated up and we have our fish all battered. And I think we're just about ready to sizzle. Let's, let's give it a little test. Oh yeah, we ready. It's hot. Let's get these guys in there. I think I can do, I don't know if I can do all five of them, but I can probably do four of them in there at once. And uh, it shouldn't take them too long, maybe three or four minutes tops. Cool. Okay, looks like they're about done. Oh, that looks perfect. I was able to get them all on here too. Oh, snap guys, those look fantastic. What you think, Jay? Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> they look so crunchy too. And Thank you for coming in clutch. Jay was gone. She went on a McDonald's run. She went and got a couple Big Macs and she, she didn't think that was going to be any good. And I did not get I'm, a couple Big Macs. I'm just kidding. She went and got us a drink. I got us some drinks. She already drank hers, I think. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I got me a nice DP. Because mm. I'm thirsty. I've been wanting a DP all morning. And uh, I've also been wanting some fried whole red ear mm. all morning. And I think they're going to be so good. Yeah, they look extra crunchy. They look hard as a rock. That's what you want. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want it to be all mushy. And that will happen from time to time if you just if you just batter them once, you're more than likely going to have um, a soggy product. You got to batter it twice, and you're more than likely going to have a nice crunchy, crunchy. product. 
And that's what you want in this way. Yes. You also want these fins crunchy so you can eat the fins, but they're probably pretty hot, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and go for it. I can't wait, I'm starving. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go with this guy right here. I think I touched him like five or six times just then. So I think it's destiny that I go with this one first. So this is our fried whole bluegill red ear hybrid specimen. And uh, what you're gonna wanna do first, if you've never had them this way, which I'm sure most of y'all have had them this way, you're gonna take these fins off. Gosh, he is hot. <laughs> Holy smokes, let me set them right here. Whew. Save the fins for later. You gotta save the fins for later. That is so hot. We might, we might need to rethink our life decisions at the moment. <laughs> that is, that's gonna burn the top of my tongue. Okay, then you have the tail. You can eat the tail. It's like eating a potato chip. It just tastes like the battery you fried it in. And we're just gonna go ahead and do that because that's probably not too hot. Yummy. Very crunchy, very tasty, very satisfying. Mm. If you think that that's weird, don't knock it till you try it, right, Joe? Right. Like, you gotta eat the tail if you fry fish whole. It's like so good. Mm. The fins are good too, but they're a little bit crunchy because they're kind of they're kind of spiny. But anyways, you can see once you remove the fin, you can see the two halves. These are like where your typical fillets are gonna be whenever you, whenever you fillet the fish normally. And so you can use your hand. Well, that's kind of spicy, wow. Or you can use a fork, peel it apart. Since it's so hot, we should probably be using a fork. But I don't have a fork. So we're gonna use our hands. I'm just gonna, look at that. See how it's separating right off that main spine? That is perfect. Now we gotta pick what side we want. We want this side. Jeez, that's hot. Okay, whoop. All right, it came right off. And then you're gonna wanna inspect it. Make sure there's not too many bones in there. Shouldn't be too many, because it just fell right off. All right, that looks so good. Crunchy on the outside, white and flaky on the inside. Let's see how it tastes. Don't burn your tongue. Mm, no promises. <laughs> mm. Delicious. <laughs> that is so good. I knew it was gonna be good. It was a lot of it was a lot of effort. And like I said, it's a little bit more of an ordeal to prepare them this way to get them to be just right. And I'm telling you guys, it is so so worth it. It's so delicious. Mmm. Jay, you gotta get in on some of this. This is delicious. Way better than that McChicken or that McDouble or Big Mac that you ate secretly at McDonald's. I know you, I know you got something. What'd you get? What'd you get? McChicken? There's no way you left there without getting a snack off the dollar menu. I got a hot and spicy McChicken. There it there is. The, it. the truth is out. She got a hot and spicy McChicken. It's okay. You can pre-game with a hot and spicy McChicken, but... I'm still going to eat the fish. I was just so hungry. <laughs> okay. You want the other You want the other side of this one? Sure. Okay. All right. You guys have a good piece? Is it hot? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, we got to get down to the bottom of this. Is it better than a McDonald's hot and spicy? Hmm. You should have waited, Jay. You should have just waited. We have all this fish. I'm gonna eat it all. <laughs> mm. That's delicious. Is it better than the hot and spicy? Mm, yeah. Those, those hot and spicies are good though. They are. Like, let us know down in the comment section, what's your favorite thing off the McDonald's menu? Let me know. We don't eat McDonald's very often. We don't. There's, I knew you were hungry <laughs> and I was trying to get these done quickly. Yeah, I'm not judging you, Jay. I know, I know. I know the struggle of going through the McDonald's drive-thru and only getting a drink. And you're so hungry. And you're so hungry. But we got it done and we've got ourselves a whole platter here of fish to eat. We don't have any sides. Might need to figure out that, but I think we'll see this first and figure that out later. That's good. It's really good. Okay, well this is definitely a treat for today. Just feel so lucky and just happy we were able to get out there yeah. on the lake, out there on the edge of the swamp and in the swamp and uh, get some nice pan fish to eat for lunch today. Although the mosquitoes tried to carry us off while we were out there, it was definitely worth it. It was a good time. It was I a had good a blast. Yeah, it's just, you know, bluegill fishing is always, it's always fun, but it, it can be more fun whenever you're in a cool environment like that. Like yeah. if you're just, you're staying on the bank and it's just like nothing really cool to look at, look at and you're just catching a little bluegill, it can be not as cool. But there's always just so much mystery and wonder whenever you're in the middle of a swamp mm -hmm. like that, especially when you don't ever know exactly what you could catch. Um, but yeah, we've got a whole platter here of fish we have left to consume. So we are going to do that right now and figure out probably some sides to go with this because I honestly forgot about all that. But anyways, we hope that y'all 
enjoyed hanging out with us today out there on the lake. If y'all enjoy these types of videos and you would like to see more, be sure to let us know down in the comments section. And if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our future wild and crazy fishing adventures. We're, We're Colin and Jay, Jay, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye, guys.